Okay. Valentine's Day is almost here, and while many of us are just thinking about the wine, candy, and romance, couples in committed relationships also need to think about how to handle money conversations. We needed two experts to get through this topic, so we invited in financial educator Lisa Bradley, who appeared on the Oprah Winfrey show when she and her husband were in deep debt, and Jessica Sabatini, an author and relationship coach. It's great to have both of you here. Welcome. So, great to be here. talking about money seems to be a challenge for most couples. Why is it so hard? It is so hard. I have seen couples argue over how much to spend on a loaf of bread. Oh. And the truth is, everyone has strikingly different perspectives, fears, expectations. I mean, really, the habits that you've developed in childhood are so different. So you cannot assume what the other person has. You can, one person might want every kind of insurance, and the other person might want a family vacation. Mm. So you have to have those conversations. You can't, you can't assume you know. Absolutely. And you have to be willing to talk about it. We talk about so many things. You look nice, you're handsome, I love everything about you, but we're afraid to ask them about their money. What is your credit score? What is your savings like? Just because you're driving a BMW, is it in your name or is it in your mama's name? Right. <laughs> <laughs> we really have to ask the real questions uh, about finances when we're getting into the relationship so that if we are different, we can find a way to either parallel them and make it work or run and find somebody who has the same beliefs and value systems as you do. Okay. And then in a lot of relationships, one person takes on all of the responsibility to handle the finances while the other is basically, I guess, kept in the dark. Does this work? Um, it does not work. That's very impossible to be in a relationship where one person is carrying the stress and the burden and the hardship of the finances. You need to talk about them because a big part of money is not necessarily the money. It is usually a symptom of the stress and the hardship that you're dealing with. And to communicate about it, whether one is a breadwinner or not, or one is bringing in the money or not, those things are irrelevant. But be in the know for many reasons. If something happens to your other party, mm -hmm. you know what to do and how to handle that situation. Um, but just as you feel like you're an equal partner in that relationship, for money and every other aspect. And a lot of people think it's easier to do it that way. And in the short run, it may feel that way. But for the long term, just all the things that she, it's too much pressure on one person. Mm -hmm. It's not fair. And that person who's kept in the dark, one day when they do see the bills, they go into shock. Mm -hmm. And it's important that everyone knows how much life costs. Yeah. Right? Life mm -hmm. costs. I, I love that <laughs> phrase. <laughs> okay, there's expensive. often secrets in relationships, secret investments, secret credit cards that cannot be a good thing, can <laughs> What do you do about that? Uh, well, you definitely should not have secrets going into any relationship. I do not see how you can build a strong foundation on any relationship on a secret. Um, that was a big part of my husband and I going on Oprah is I had not been honest about my finances. When bills came, I was hiding them and sticking them. It took us nine hours to open up our bills mm. uh, on a first show and reveal the secret. And that just increased the pressure and hardships on our relationship. So you have to be real about that um, so that you can talk about and deal in the truth of your money. If you don't know the truth, there's no way that you can come up with a winning solution together. So, um, you know, I'm all about having a secret account or not a secret account. Let me rephrase it. Another account. But that doesn't mean I have to keep it from you if right. we have separate accounts or I want to have my own money. Uh, trust enough to be able to share the truth with your spouse on everything. Yeah. And uh, sometimes we keep secrets for good reasons. Like we're trying to protect the other person because mm -hmm. we think they can't handle the stress. Or we keep the secret because we think we're not going to get our way. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to spend this money or I want to make this investment and my spouse is not going to agree, so I'm not going to mm -hmm. tell them. Uh, and if that is the situation, I think it's important that you really take some time and get grounded. Is this a good decision? And if you think about it, you say, it is a good decision. I know why, this and this and this. Then when you present that to your spouse, they might be more likely to hear you because it's mm -hmm. confident. But if you're looking at it and you're like, oh, wait, maybe this is a mistake. And you can say to your spouse, I think I've made a mistake or I think I'm thinking about this, but I can't tell if it's the right, right decision. Can you help me? Two minds are always better than one. Very mm -hmm. good information. Wow. Lots yes. of food for thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, ladies. Yes.